right, y'all, we got part three. Part three of this series is going to be five tips and ways that you can set up your sinking funds. And those are like your savings and your like small savings aside from other savings that you may be doing. So in part three, we're going to be talking about how do I set up my sinking funds? What are some tips that I use to set up my sinking funds? How did I get started with that? I'm also going to be looking at um, different categories that you can save for, how to how to um, calculate them, uh, what is like a you know a realistic goal, etc. So that's what part three is about. If you have not seen parts one and parts two, then you might want to pause this video and go watch parts one, which was the budgeting, how to start a budget, and then part two, which talks about cash envelopes. So go ahead and pause. I'm gonna give you like two seconds. Go ahead and watch part one. In part two, I will have both of them linked in this video right here. So if this is something that you are interested in seeing in regards to part two or part three of this series, then keep on watching. All right, y'all, we are almost done with this series. We are in part three of the series. And I'm so excited. I really hope that they have been really, 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 really helpful to you all and i'm excited just to be recording them so uh, i can't wait um for you all to see all of the videos so we are in part three which talks about our sinking funds what are sinking funds i like to describe them as a long-term savings so instead of dropping like a thousand dollars on something out of your paycheck at the last minute because you forgot about it you can save little by little over the next few months weeks um every little bit counts and every little bit adds up so i like to just save the money over time so that when it is time for me to drop the money on that I am not feeling so overwhelmed that, man, I got to drop $1,200 on Christmas gifts and I didn't plan for it. I didn't save for it. So when I say this is probably my most exciting video that I'm going to record in this series, it is my most exciting because it is the one that I see works for me on a daily basis. I love my sinking funds. I cannot say that enough. I love it so much to where I just reached one of my really big goals. And I reached one last year too, when I was saving up for my 30th birthday and I went on my trip to Mexico and I recorded that video and everything. But then my kids' passports just came in recently and I am stoked. I've been having this sinking fund for years, literally years. And so I am just so excited. So if you have not started sinking funds after this video, I want you to, or actually during this video, I want you to follow along with me. Think of some categories, take some from me and just get your sinking funds started today. All right. When we did our budget in part one, we set aside $575 for our sinking funds based off our budget. Now I do sinking funds every paycheck on the 1st and the 15th. If you are a weekly budgeter, then you can do second funds every week. If you are a monthly, then you can set aside monthly. For me, I do paycheck by paycheck. So 1st and the 15th, I get paid twice a month. So like I said, we set aside $500. Just like the cash envelopes, if you want to use just the paper, you absolutely can. All you need to do is just write sinking funds right here and list them out and list the amount out. Boom. Good. You in there. Simple. Don't make this more complicated than it needs to be. I've been preaching that the whole time. So for sinking funds, you want to identify what you want to save for. Some categories that I would suggest saving for that I do have personally are going to be like Christmas. Christmas comes every year. If you celebrate it, it's a good idea to start saving for it at the beginning of the year. Birthdays, if you have kids, family members that you, nieces, nephews, anybody's birthday, those are some categories that I would start saving for as well. For your vehicle, whether it's a motorcycle, a car, electric car, a girl, it's a four wheeler, a scooter. However, you get around and whatever you need to get around um, in your life, set aside a sinking fund for 
it. That is going to be so beneficial for you. Another category is going to be back to school, especially for my um, parents out there. Back to school is a huge fun for me. I have two little ones, so we have to go back to school shopping every year. And I like to set aside money for that. Another sinking fun is going to be... Um, uh, if you have pet, if you're a dog mom or a dog dad or any pets in your life, you want to save up for that as well. Having a pet, I just learned here recently, it's expensive. You definitely want a sinking fund for that. So that is a category that I have as well. Another one is going to be your subscriptions. I know Amazon Prime is like a big one right now. I do have an Amazon Prime account and I love saving up for it throughout the year. One last sinking fund that I would suggest you think about is going to be like a travel one. If you, whether you don't travel at all or you like travel up the road and you stay locally, you still want to have money set aside for like additional, like maybe plane tickets. For me, my now boarding AKA travel fund covers like plane tickets, um, any miscellaneous items you know, related to any travel that we do. If I have like a little last minute trip that sprung on me and I didn't really, I wasn't able to save up for it like I wanted to, I can pull a, you know, a little bit from that one. So those are just some goals and stuff that you want to kind of save up for. So I'm going to go ahead and write those in and I'm going to write them in alphabetical order. Just, just works with my brain. Um, so again, we have our pet. I have my car. I named my car Black Beauty. We have now boarding, which is my travel envelope. Then we have back to school. And the reason they're out of order like that is some of them are soft sinking funds and some of them are harder. Or you can name it like low or high priority. But I just like to say soft and hard. And I'm going to explain that here in a second. Let me just write out the sinking funds. So again, I do have way more than this. I have a bunch of second funds. You can have two, you can have three. It's whatever works for your life and your lifestyle. If you don't want that many, you don't have to have that many. So for me, um, you want to identify what you're saving for. That's step one. Step two is going to be identify a goal. What goal do you have in mind for your sinking funds? So for instance, my dog, I don't have a set goal in mind. I just want to send money towards her fund. So that's going to be a soft sinking fund for me. There's not a set goal in mind. It's just a goal where if I reach a certain goal, okay, cool. But it is a priority for me to send money. That is why it is a sinking fund for me. So I have to send money to it. So I'm going to identify that one as a soft sinking fund. Same thing with Black Beauty. I do not have a set goal in mind um, but with black beauty i i take into account like tires oil changes miscellaneous items not your gas and your day-to-day -day expenses i do count like car washes and stuff like that so that's also going to be a soft sinking fund now boarding is going to be another one that is a soft fund or a low priority and the reason being is i don't have a set goal in mind but i do know that i want to continuously every time i get paid it is a priority for me to send money to that sinking fund now back to school and the rest of these are going to be high priority aka hard sinking funds for me where i have a goal in mind for me i want to have at least eight hundred dollars for back to school and that also encompasses any lunch um fees any field trips teachers um gifts throughout the year that 800 is literally for the entire school year so that is why i do such a large amount because i wanted to encompass the entire year not just back to school shopping we're not spending all that money on clothes just not in my household we're just not so then amazon depending on the type of amazon account you have i'm gonna put 160 because i know they went up but you do it to how much you want it to be. So 160 for Amazon, and that's going to be for the Amazon Prime account. Then Christmas, I do about $1,200. That's going to be $600 per child. I normally never hit $600, but depending on what my kids are asking for, and I also like to include family members, my nieces and nephews, y'all. I got a whole basketball team of nieces and nephews. Um, so I like to just make it a flat rate of what my goal is going to be for the year and then for birthdays both of my kids will get three hundred dollars um and so far this has been a lot actually for the past few years it's been a lot but i'm still going to put it on here um, because whatever i don't spend i always send to the next year 
So those are the next steps. You want to identify a goal amount. Once you have a goal amount in place, you can take a scratch piece of paper or however you want to make this simple for you. So I'm going to just write out all of my goals here. And I'm going to just do this times two because it's going to be the same. So for me, the next step you want to do is identify the time that you want this goal to be complete. For back to school, we know back to school is August of every year. So regardless, it's going to be in August. Amazon, my Amazon comes out in January of every single year. Christmas, obviously December, but most times we want to be done in like November time. So we'll put November. And then this is going to be different because one is going to be July and the other one is going to be October. So I have a little bit more wiggle room with them. Now, once we identify the time that you want it to be done, the next thing you want to go ahead and tackle is how much money you need to send, whether a monthly paycheck or monthly budget, bi-weekly budget, or a weekly budget. I'm going to do all four. So I'm going to start with monthly because that's the easiest. Right here, we're starting August. Normally, when I do my sinking funds for the year, I start in January. So for this, I know January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I have eight months to save. So if I am a monthly budgeter, I'm going to divide this $800 by eight. So that means every month, I need to send $100 to my um back to school fund in order for me to reach my $800 by August. August. So every month I have to send that. For my bi white my bi-weekly, honestly, I can just divide that by two and it's gonna be $50 every paycheck. And I am thinking of starting this in January. Say for instance, you only had you had just started your budget, let's say you just started your budget in March and you want it to be done by August. March, April, May, June, July, August. That means you have five months. So now you got to divide five months by 800. So that means you got to send $160. Let's say you only have two months to save. You got to send $400 for the next two months in order to get to August. So you kind of see how that take how that happens. Take your goal amount divided by the time that you want to save. Identify how much time you have to get to your goal. And then calculate what you need to get there. So again, if we want to do weekly, let's just say there is four weeks out of the month, which is going to be, I'm just going to do four times. I had this in my head. I just messed it up. Four. Oh, okay. Four. And then we got eight months. So we got 32 weeks to save $800. We're going to divide that. We're going to divide 800 by 32. Now we got We only send $25 every week. So this is per week, this is per two weeks, and that's by month. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these so you kind of see what I am talking about. So for this, we got, um, for this, this is like a whole year because I would have saved it up the previous year. So 160 divided by 12 for the whole year, it's about $13 a month. So just to round it up, it's better to have more than to not have enough. So 14 and then for bi-weekly, we need about $7. And then for 160, what's that? 12 times 4, so 48 weeks, we need about $3. So I would just say send $5, and the, you can always transfer the rest to the next month. But you can use just the 3 or $4. So then for this right here, we got 1200 divided by 12. That's going to be $100 because we want to start in January, but we actually want to do November instead. So 1200 divided by 11. So per month, we need to send 10 to $11. So I'm just going to say 11 and then bi-weekly, that's going to be, if we did, we just say $6, better to have more than not enough. And then for that, again, 48 weeks. So we're going to do 25 every week and then when we get to the birthdays this like i said is a little bit trickier because i have two different end goals i have two different dates so for the first date it's going to be july so that's seven months so i got 300 divided by seven that's going to say i need 43 dollars i'm going to start with july first i need 43 dollars monthly 
And then bi bi weekly, I need twenty two dollars, right? Twenty one. Yep. And then weekly. Uh oh, not forty eight. We got to do seven times four, so twenty eight. I need about eleven dollars. Now for my October goal for a monthly, we got a little bit more time to save for that. So three hundred divided by ten, that's gonna be thirty dollars. My bi-weekly is going to be 15 and then my weekly is going to be $75. Is that right? No, $7.5. I'm like, that's a lot. So we'll just do $8. I wish I could make it more complicated than what it was, but that is honestly how simple it is. You just need to know what your what you want to save for how much you want to save how soon do you want to get there what's the timeline if it's not for two or three years then you got a long time to save for it which is going to be super helpful if it's super short and you got to save like in the next year or within that year then you're gonna have to fork out a lot more money so it's best to save up for it in more time and then calculate how much you need to get there i just sat here and calculated all of these so when we go through and fill in our 575 dollars now we know we we're going to be putting a lot more towards our sinking funds but when we did our budget we just kind of gave ourselves a little more extra if you wanted to do this first before actually doing your sinking funds and before doing your budget what you would be able to do would have been for you to total everything up since i am a paycheck budgeter i'm gonna go with all the b's so for me for all my sinking funds i really would have only needed a total of a hundred dollars for all of my sinking funds for all of these sinking funds i would have only needed a hundred dollars so what we're going to do just because we only needed a hundred dollars for this paycheck we're going to send the rest of it to our soft sinking fund so we can get a little extra on the time. But what we also could do is send double for everything because we, we sent so much to sinking funds. So I'm actually going to send 200 towards my hard sinking funds and then we're going to fill in the rest because we already closed out our budget and paycheck one. So we said that we were on budget. So I don't want to confuse what I wrote, what I did in part one. So with that, I'm going to fill in these first. So we know that we needed 15 for Shell birthday, but we're going to do 30. Actually, we're going to do 30 for the both of them. And then for Christmas, we needed 6, but we're going to do 11. We actually could just do 12. And then for Amazon, we needed 7, but we're just going to do 14. Because we're going to do the same. And then for... Uh, back to school, we're going to do 100. So let me total that up again. So 186. Where did I forget? Oh, I missed this right here. So we actually were not the same. Um, this actually should be 43. So we were a little over. It's 230, not $100. So for Mally, it would have been um, 43. So we had a, a we had two hundred and twenty nine dollars that we were sending towards our hard sinking funds. So we gonna scratch that out. So now we still have three hundred and forty six dollars. So now this is where you can kind of play around. Um, for me, I would send one fifty towards my back my now boarding. So one fifty towards that. Let me just take all this other stuff away. Now we got 226 left. I will also send another hundred dollars towards my pet because pet expenses are a lot. And then I would do 126. Now 126 is enough for oil change already. So now I know that I, I got enough for oil change already. So now we have our sinking funds all totaled up in our budget. Everything's nice and neat in there. And we found out what our goal is for the next few months and how much we need to send. So it wouldn't necessarily go like this on here, but I'm going to write it on the side just so I know. So every paycheck, I need to send $50. For this, I need to send 7 
for Christmas, I need to send six. For Shell, it's got to be 15. And then for my son, it's got to be 43. And the only reason it's more for him is because I have less of a time to save. But for the past few uh, years uh, since I've been doing this, I have not been spending all $300 in their, um, in their fund. I've been actually spending a lot less. And so that just helps me out with the following year. Once you reach your budget in your sinking funds don't quit stuffing them save it for the following year like some of my sinking funds i'm already on 2023 because i reached my goal amount now that we have that out the way i just want to kind of share some of my sinking funds envelopes and everything that i use you do not have to use an envelope like a fancy envelope you honestly can just get a plain white envelope from the dollar store and put your money in there you don't have to go all out and be fancy but girl if you do i got some in my shop so you can go ahead and check them out but you know that's if you want to be fancy you don't have to be but hey, these are just some of the envelopes that i have in here that i created and they are available in the shop so again like i said we had the amazon prime we had my kid's birthday then we had christmas we had my dog Black Beauty, Back to School, Now Boarding, and then this is just a miscellaneous fund envelope. So you do not have to have envelopes again. You don't. You can use just a plain regular envelope to set and start your sinking funds, but these are just ways that keep me motivated by having something cute to stuff it in. And so that's just a way to do it. You'll see these all over YouTube, just the little cute little binders. Um, I do separate my sinking funds up by hard and soft. So I do have two separate binders that I just created here recently and it houses the rest of my sinking funds. I just took some of those out just to make this video not extremely long, longer than it already is. And so these are just some of the other ones that I save up for. So if you are new to my channel and you found me through this series, make sure you subscribe to my channel below leave a comment as well as like my uh, video, like my page, whatever. Follow me on Instagram, social media, and all of that. Um, and just see how I constantly use my sinking funds, how I budget my paycheck every month, how I stuff my cash envelopes and everything. But again, I really, 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 really hope this was helpful. And I appreciate you for clicking on this video and watching it. Um, I will see you in the last part of this video, which is going to be how do I save. That one's going to be more of a face-to-face, -face, all jazzed up, all cute makeup and everything because I recorded it on a separate day. So bear with me in that one. It's all over the place. It's super chaotic. I'm just going to give you a heads up now. But I hope to see you in that video as well. And then see you at the end of this when we talk about... Um, just a recap. So thank you so, 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 so much for watching. And I really hope that this video was helpful to you and I will see you in another one. Bye.